What's up, guys? We're back here, and as promised, I'm going to go through a bunch more tic-tac-toe factoring examples with you here, okay? So, got one in here. Let's just jump right into it, okay? So, we got x squared minus 3x minus 40. Again, my goal here is to factor this into two binomial groups, and I got my tic-tac-toe board here, okay? And so, the first thing I do is I would, again, write across the top row here my terms in my trinomial, okay? And I don't write them exactly in order. I'll go x squared in this first one, my first term. Then the second square is actually gonna contain my last term, this negative 40, and then that negative 3x is my check column, right? That's my big important one that I'm gonna use to check at the end to make sure I got the right numbers, okay? All right, and then after I fill in the top, I wanna look at the signs, like I said, right? Because that's gonna clue me into what these two signs in my groups are going to be, okay? So again, I look at this C sign right here, and because it's a minus, okay, that tells me that my two signs in my binomial groups are going to be different, okay? One's going to be a plus, one's going to be a minus, okay? I know that because this is a minus, okay? So what do I do here, right? I'm going to fill in these boxes, and I'm going to fill in these boxes by figuring out, like for this first column, it'll be what multiplies to give me x squared, Okay, and that's always just going to be x times x. x times x is x squared. That will always be the case in that first column. Okay, unless there's a coefficient there, then it'll be a little different. Okay, but then I try to fill in the second column and I, and with the same thing, right? What multiplies to give me negative 40, okay? And negative 40 is a bigger number, so there's lots of factors of negative 40, but it's almost easier to ignore the negative at, at the start and just list, okay, for 40, what multiplies to give me 40? So you can say... 1 times 40 is 40, 2 times 20, 4 times 10, 5 times 8, okay? Those all multiply to give me positive 40, but remember, when we have a negative, right, that means that one of these numbers needs to be negative. So I could have negative 1 times 40 or positive 1 times negative 40, right? So at least one of these numbers, or one of these numbers has to be negative. But my key here is, right, if you are able to kind of figure out and write and use this check number, okay, to kind of guide you with picking your factors, okay, that can be really helpful, okay? So let me just go with this. Let me go with this right here, okay? Let's clue, and so let's, let's think about that. And, okay, right now I have negative 5 and positive 8. Let's check on that, okay? So I'm just going with that. I'm going to see if it works, okay? Again, you could pick any one of them randomly to start if you if you don't know. But I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you why I chose that one. X times negative five, right? So I multiply across the side here. Okay, so x times negative five would just be negative five x, and x times eight would be positive eight x. Okay. Now my check here, okay, my check column is I want to make sure if I combine these two terms, okay, positive eight x and negative five x, would they add to give me negative three? Okay, so positive 8 plus negative 5, so 8 plus negative 5 would give me positive 3. So I'm really close, okay? So when you're really close like that, it means you probably picked the right numbers, but your signs are off, okay? And that can happen, right? Especially when we have a negative number here, right? Because it could be negative 5 and positive 8. So let's just try flipping that around, positive 5 and negative 8, okay? What that's going to do is... If I remultiply, x times 5 will give me positive 5x, and then x times negative 8 will give me negative 8x. And then when I go to add them, negative 8x plus 5x does give me negative 3x. So my check is complete, and I got it, okay, which means I got my two pairs, okay? So my two pairs are the ones across the diagonals here, okay? So it would be x and negative 8, or x minus 8, so that will go in my minus group here. Okay, and then x and positive 5, or x plus 5. Okay, that'll go in my first group. Okay, so x plus 5, x minus 8. Okay, so there's example 1 for you. x plus 5, x minus 8, all worked out. Let's do a couple more. Okay, we've got number 4 up here, and as you can see, my eraser is struggling. Not able to erase, but it's okay. You can still figure it out. Okay, so we look at this again. We get this, try to get this process down, okay? First step is to copy down all my terms across the top. So again, it would be 2x squared. My last term is in the middle, so it would be 15. My check term is in the middle there, 11x. There it is across the top, okay? 
Okay, now that I've filled in across the top, I look at my signs, right? And I'm trying to figure out, okay, what are the signs going to be in my two binomial groups? And again, I look at my C sign first, this plus. Okay, and again, a plus tells me that both signs in the groups are going to be the same. Okay, but I can know exactly what they are if I look at the first sign. Okay, the first sign tells me that these are going to be both pluses in here. Wonderful. Okay, so everything's going to be positive. Just like in life, be positive, just like example four. Um, okay, so now that I filled in these signs, okay, now I can fill in the boxes, okay? So 2x squared, okay? So I'm wondering what times what equals 2x squared? And again, when there's an x squared, that's always gonna be x times x, okay? But there's a coefficient here. So I'm wondering what times what equals two? That's easy, right? Two times one is two. That's the only, uh, the only factors of two. But now I look at this one, okay, and I'm thinking, okay, 15. What multiplies to give me 15? And so you look at that, 15, okay, so you think, okay, 15 is 1 times 15 is 15, 3 times 5 is 15, and that's it, right? Because we're not interested in decimals. So just those two, okay? And so I fill in these, okay, I just, again, I just pick one, okay? So let me go, let me go 5 and 3, okay? And again, I just filled in. I just chose my second group. You could choose your first one if you want to, but I just I went with this one, okay? Oftentimes, I'll clue you in here, if you have more than one group of factors, start with the one where the numbers are closest together. A lot of the time, that ends up being it, but not always, okay? But that's a good place to start if you list out all your factors, okay? So, again, our check is to multiply across the top. Or, sorry, multiply side to side here, okay? So I do 2x times 5, so 2x times 5 would be 10x, and then 1x times 3 would be 3x, okay? So what I want to check to see, again, I have all this, I'm wondering, okay, it could be this group and this group for my answer, but I have to check, I have to check, okay? And I add these across the top to see if this is my, if this fits, okay? That's, that's my checkbox, okay? So does 3x plus 10x equal 11x? No, unfortunately, no, it does not. So that means I am not done. That means I messed up my pairs in here, this five and three, okay? So I need to pick another pair, okay? So I don't necessarily need to pick another pair, right? Because I had five and three. Sometimes it works to just flip them around. Let's check that, okay? So I do 2x times three and I get 6x and then I get 1x times five is just five X. And so then I check that, all right, does five X plus six X equal 11 X? Doggone it, it sure does. So I found my pair, wonderful, okay? And that means that I'm done. I just have to group together my answers here, okay? So two X and positive five is one of my groups, two X plus five, okay? And my other group, one X and three, so I would just do x or 1x plus 3, and that is my answer. Okay, there we go. Good times. All right, so I'm going to do two more, and then we are all done. All righty, number five, moving on up. Okay, factor the trinomial here. Okay, again, normally we start by writing all my terms across the top of my tic-tac-toe box, but look at this. Okay, do you notice something about your coefficients? 4, 10. 24. They are all even numbers, okay? All even numbers have a common factor of 2, okay? So we need to look for that and divide it out. So if I divide out my 2, okay, just before I do that, look for a GCF first, okay? Because sometimes, yeah, sometimes there are trinomials that can be factored twice, once by factoring out a GCF, and then you factor what's left in here, right? Because factoring is just reverse distributing, meaning we're kind of breaking it up, okay? Distributing is kind of multiplying it all together. Factoring is the opposite, breaking it up, okay? So that's what I'm going to do here. Break it up by dividing out by 2 first, okay? Again, my GCF is written outside here. Yeah, 4x squared divided by 2 would be 2x squared, okay? Negative 10x divided by 2 would be negative 5x. And negative 24 divided by 2 would be negative 12, okay? So I factored out my GCF of 2. So you look for that, okay? Now, we're not done, okay, because we're still going to factor the trinomial. 
but I just look at this part, okay? Because I kind of separated the two from the rest of the group, so that part is factored. I want to factor this, okay? So I hope if this factors, I hope I have a group of a final answer looking like this. Okay, that's my goal, okay? So I'm ignoring this two from here on out for the rest of the problem, okay? This outside two, I'm just focusing on this group, okay? But again, so just like any other tic-tac-toe problem, I would write these terms across the top. So 2x squared, last term in the middle, negative 12. My check terms in the middle, negative 5x. So again, I do that, and then I look at my signs. Okay, I look at my signs. Okay, the C sign is a minus. So again, what does that tell you? That tells you that these are going to be different in here. One's a plus, one's a minus. Okay. So we know all that information about this going into it, okay? Let's actually do the math here and figure it out, okay? So 2x squared, just like the last one, 2x squared would be 2x times 1x. 2x times 1x is x squared. Now, negative 12, okay, negative 12. I think we've dealt with this already. Negative 12, what multiplies to give me negative 12? Again, forget the negatives for now. Just think, okay, 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4, okay? But because it is negative, Either the one, one of these numbers in the pairs just has to be negative, okay? So let's just pick a pair and run with it, okay? So I'm going to go with this guy here, okay? Uh, two and six. But again, one of them has to be negative, so let's just say this one, okay? doesn't matter. So 2x times 2 would be 4x, and x times negative 6 would be negative 6x, okay? Now I want to do my check, okay? I want to do my check. Do these two add to give me my check term? Okay, so negative 6x plus 4x, negative 2x, not negative 5x. So that did not work. Okay, let's go 4 and 3 and make the 3 negative. Okay, so 2x times 4 would be 8x, x times negative 3 would be negative 3x, and I add them, so negative 3 plus 8 would be positive 5. I'm not there, but I'm on to something, right? It's supposed to be negative, and I got positive. So that means, okay, my numbers are probably good. Let's just flip around which one was negative. So if I do 2x times negative 4, that makes this negative 8x. x times 3, positive 3x. 3x plus negative 8x. Hey, I'm there. Negative 5x. I got it. Wonderful. Okay, so that means this right here. It's going to be my answer. I just have to group it the right way. So it'd be 2x plus 3. So that'd be x minus 4. There we go. There's my answer. Okay. So there's another tricky one. I'm going to do one more even trickier one, and then we're done. All right. We're here, and we are going to factor the trinomial another time. 6x squared plus 11x plus 3. Okay. So again, start in this the same way. I hope you're starting to catch on to the process here. Okay, so step one, write these terms across the top. 6x squared, last term in the middle, 3, check term, 11x here. Step two, look at my signs. Okay, that's going to tell me about my groups here. Okay, technically, the real step one should be look for a GCF, but there is none here. You see some prime numbers in here, and that, that means there's not going to be a GCF. Okay, so, but look for that too. Okay. But anyway, I don't have any GCF, so I can look. I write my terms across. Okay, I look at my signs. My C sign is a plus. That means the signs in these groups are going to be the same, right? And so I look at my other sign of a plus, and that tells me, okay, all pluses, all positives, all around. Fun. Next step, I start to fill in these. Okay, what's tricky here, what's tricky here is what I have what's called a composite a value. You might remember composite is the opposite of prime, right? Prime numbers only have two factors, one in themselves. Composite numbers have more factors, okay? And usually my a number is prime, but here it's composite. It's six, right? So my factors of six, just writing these real small to the side, six times one and two times three. So I have to be aware of that as I go about this process here too, because not only Right, usually these are pretty much, you know, they're going to stay the same. I can kind of keep them the same the whole time. Now I might have to change these numbers in these boxes too, which might trip us up a little bit. But thankfully, this term is going to help us out here. Okay. But anyway, let's just start out. Let's say 6x times 1x gives me 6x squared. Okay. 
Let's go with that again. I might have to change those. Um, and then my three, here's why it's helpful, okay? What multiplies to give you three? Nothing other than three times one. Great. So that means in my pairs here, it's going to be either three and one or one and three, but I pretty much don't really have to change those, okay? And it's positive, so I don't even have to worry about making one of them negative, okay? So great. So this time, these are going to stay pretty much the same, and I might have to change these up, okay? So let's multiply and check, okay? So again, I multiply 6x times 3 is going to give me 18x, and then 1x times 1 gives me 1x. So I add them across the top, okay? 1 plus 18 gives me 19x. That's not 11x, so this combination did not work, okay? So again, normally, I would change these, okay? But... I, that, there's no other factors. So let's actually, let's, let, we're going to flip these around. Okay. Let's just flip it around. Let's try six and one again. Okay. Let's just try one X and six X this time. Flip them around. Okay. So let's remultiply. So one X times three gives me three X and then six X times one gives me six X. Okay. So I add six X plus three X. I want nine X, but no, it's 11 X. 11x is there is my check. Now, so this pair doesn't work either. Okay, so I tried both ways with six and one didn't work. So it's probably going to be two and three. Okay, let's try two x and three x. So two x times three gives me six x. Three x times one gives me three x. Three x. Three x plus six x gives me nine x again. God, so close. Okay, but I'm not getting there. Okay. Let's flip it around one more time and do 3x and 2x, okay? So let's multiply. 3x times 3 gives me 9x. 2x times 1 gives me 2x. I add 2x plus 9x gives me 11x. Oh, thank goodness. Sometimes these problems can be super exhausting, okay? But you feel good after you solve them, okay? So this is my combination. It checked out. It worked, right, because these added to give me 11 so my answer is going to be 3x plus 1 and 2x plus 3. Okay, I love it. That is the answer. That is the tic-tac-toe strategy done a bunch of times for you. So I hope that makes sense. Let me know if you need another video with some of these done, and I can do that for you. Okay, so good job. Thanks for following.